Decisions, decisions, decisions. So you have decided to relocate to the Atlanta, Georgia area, and you have decided to actually rent instead of buy. Why? Because maybe you are not quite sure. You can't really pinpoint it down which city you want to purchase a home or you have relocated here because of work and you're not really sure on the time frame. Is it a short-term assignment or will they extend it to be long-term? Or you are a student, you have moved here for educational reasons and you have no intention on staying here long-term and so you have decided to rent. Whatever the reason may be, today's video, I am going to talk about the rental market in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And you're going to learn a few things. You're going to learn how much is going to cost you to rent in the Atlanta area, how much is going to cost you to get started, and also what do you need to do documentation wise? What do you need to have in order to be able to rent? So if this is your first time to the channel, my name is Lorena Saunders and I am a realtor right here in the greater Atlanta area. And so I just love it when my viewers become clients. You all have been rock stars. You've reached out to me and I just love to be able to help you relocate to the Atlanta, Georgia area. So if that's you and you're looking for someone to help and be in your corner, give me a call, send me an email or a text, and I'll be happy to help you do that. So first things first, what documentations do you need to have in order in order for you to move to the Atlanta, Georgia area? So every landlord is going to be different. In the Atlanta market, we have corporate landlords, and we also have private landlords. So just depending on who the landlord is, they're going to have their own criteria of what they are going to want from the tenants. But generally speaking, this is what I see. They want you to have three times the monthly income. So for example, if the rental rate is $1,000, they want you to make $3,000. Now this could be for you individually or if you are rooming with a roommate or if you have a spouse, whoever is going to be contributing to that particular rent, they want to make sure that it's going to be three times the monthly rental rate. The other thing they're going to be checking is they're going to be checking any type of eviction. So if you ever had any past evictions, if there's open or it's unsatisfied, they're going to be looking at that. And that is something that can actually disqualify your application. They're also going to be looking at Chapter 7 bankruptcy. So if that is still something that is lingering and open and hasn't been satisfied and closed, that can be something as well that disqualifies your application. Now, they are looking for applications from everyone that's going to be living in the household that is of the age 18 and older. So those are going to be the individuals that have to put in an application and they're going to check all of this in information from each person. Now, the other thing they're going to be looking at is your credit profile. So a lot of these corporations and even um, individual landlords, uh, private landlords have kind of moved away from just looking solely at your credit score. What they're doing is they're looking at the bigger picture. They want to look at your credit profile. Now, I know you're saying, Lorena, what is my credit profile and what exactly are they looking at? So I'm going to share that with you. They are going to be looking not only at your credit score, they're also going to want to see your credit utilization. They're also going to want to look at your inquiries. And they're also going to want to look at your payment history to make sure that you have a history of paying on time. And so they have a certain um, parameter that they like this to fit in. Um, and everybody might be a little slightly different, but as long as you fit in that box, you'll be good to go. Now, when working with a private owner, it may be a little different. They may be a little bit more flexible than the corporations. Corporations, they have check boxes and you have to fit perfectly in these boxes and they check them off and they don't want to hear any sad stories, any um, anything like that. But on the other side, if you can find a private owner, they tend to be a little bit more flexible. They're flexible with the lease terms. 
Um, they're flexible with giving, you know, second chances or just kind of understanding people's situation because they're private owners, right? And so if you are looking for a private owner, I will tell you this is like driving for dollars, what they say. You got to get out. You got to get in your car. You're looking for signs in the yard that says for rent by owner or rent signs and things of that nature without any corporate name or business names and things of that nature. Um, and, and that's really how you're going to find them. If you're working with a realtor, a realtor can also find them. We have access to the MLS so we can see properties that are listed for uh, or by owners who are also working with uh, realtors to help them find tenants for their properties. But the vast majority of the homes for rent in the Atlanta market, and I'm talking about single family, townhomes, condos, right? Those are going to be owned by large corporations. And so again, with large corporations, they have processes in place, and you have to meet those particular criteria in order for them to approve your application. So that goes into my next point. Who owns these homes in the Atlanta area? Again, the vast majority of the homes are owned by corporations. We have seen a influx of corporate homeowners just come in and suck up all the homes on the market, or at least what seems to be a vast a, a vast majority of the homes on the market. And so a lot of the private homeowners, they've either sold their homes to these large corporations or they have these large corporations manage these properties for them, for property management. And part of the tier packaging of that could be that these property management companies um, find tenants for the owners for their properties. And so again, you'll be working with a corporation. Now, how do you find these homes? Because it's not always as easy as you may think, right? Um, If you are going at it on your own, you can look at places like apartmentfinders.com, apartmentguide.com, promove. Dot com. Now, ProMove, that is a great resource if you just don't have time. If you don't have time and you need somebody to look for an apartment for you, then ProMove is a great resource. Now, if you're looking for somebody to look for a home for you, like home, town, home, condo, that sort of thing, you want to use a realtor if you are needing assistance. ProMove typically deal with apartment communities. Now, when you're dealing with an apartment community, you can just go right there to the apartment community, contact them directly. They usually have leasing agents that work on site. um, And so just call them between the business hours. You can then set up an appointment time for you to come out to the apartment community and they will take you on a tour. I would not suggest you going directly to the apartment community only because when it was COVID, you had to make an appointment and they got kind of used to that. And so a lot of them have changed their practices where you have to call, make an appointment, and then you can come out to see the property. So I would definitely advise you with the apartment communities that you definitely call before you come. Okay. Now, when it comes to the um, rooms and just kind of creative housing situation, you can rent a room. You can also do Airbnb. Airbnb was really popular in 2020, 2021, and 2022 when the market was really hot. And by the time a seller would put their home on the market, it would be sold, but then they themselves would be trying to get into their next home and they would be in these bidding wars. And so they had this gap where they were needing home, needing houses, but they didn't want to go and sign a lease because it was 12 months or 18 months and they didn't want it that long. They just needed it for four or five or maybe six months. And so Airbnbs became a really popular solution for that. So if you are in that kind of situation, you may want to check out an Airbnb. There are some um, landlords that will rent out homes or rent out rooms in homes. And you can also look into that. Now, I will say when you start going to the Craigslist route, when you start going to the Facebook marketplace route, be really, really careful because scams are prevalent when it comes to 
the housing industry. And so what we've seen is people don't even own the home. They'll just post the home up and people will inquire about it. People may even pay for an application fee or even go as far as putting down a security deposit. And then that particular person is gone. They never see them again and their money is gone. So be very, very careful when you are doing this by yourself. You want to make sure that the person that is leasing the home, they actually own the home. So you want to make sure that you do your homework. Now, as realtors, when you're working with realtors, we can check to make sure that they are indeed the owners of the home. So we again have access to the MLS where we can look for homes um, that are for rent. And then we also have other tips of the trade that we can look for property as well. Um, But if you're going at it by yourself without any representation, just be super mindful and super careful. And then the other place that you can go to is Zillow. Zillow or Realtor.com to be able to find property. Now with Zillow especially, sometimes those properties are a little outdated. They've already been leased and things of that nature. So you may get a little frustrated with seeing properties that are perceived to be available, but the agent or whomever has placed it on the site just didn't take it down. So just be cautious of that as well. Okay. So now in the Atlanta area, we have seen an influx of builders being creative. And what they have created is called a build to rent community. And so Atlanta is the third largest of this movement happening in this space. And so what it is, is new home construction builders are building homes, new homes with the intent of finding people to rent the homes out. They're not selling them. The homes are not for sale. You would just rent the home out and the whole community is like that. Now, there are a handful of places like this around the metro Atlanta area that I know of, um, but it's something that is a movement that is happening. So it's not everywhere, but there are communities, again, that there are new home construction and all the homes in that community are rental properties. Okay. All right. So what is it going to cost you to be able to move to the Atlanta area and rent a home? Well, according to the resource that I looked up, it said that the average rental rate is $1,800 a month. Now, when I saw that, I have to be honest. I was like, where? (laughs) Where is that at? Okay, because that is not what I'm seeing. But if you look really, really hard, And if you look in certain locations that you wouldn't otherwise look, you can find that rental rate of $1,800 a month. Now, most of you have already told me you want to live in a great school district. You want to live in a safe area, a sought after area with things to do and things of that nature. And I'm telling you now, if you are looking to live in those types of neighborhood, you're going to be looking about $2,500 a month and up for a home, single family home, three bedroom, two bath. So that is going to be the price point that you're going to be looking at. Now, if you are trying to get started, there is a startup cost to renting a home. And so you have to put in an application. Again, this is for anyone that's going to be living in a home that is 18 and older. Application fees range from anywhere from like $20 to $30. You'll also have to put in a security deposit, which is typically one month worth of rent. The other thing, if you have pets, If you have dogs or cats, there is a pet rental fee. Now, this also can vary. I've seen it anywhere between $300 and $400 per pet. Now, they usually don't have a pet restriction, like as far as what type of breed of dog or anything like that. They do have restriction when it comes to, you know, like no farm animals, no exotic animals, things of that nature. I see more of either weight restrictions or quantity restrictions. So if you have a cat or a dog, you can have two cats or maybe two dogs. Or if you have a dog, it can't go over 150 pounds. Or if you have a cat and a dog, you 
combine the weight and it can't go over more than 150 pounds, something like that. Now, the other thing that I see is HOA fees. So they pass the HOA fees to the tenant. And so if you like a home and it's in an HOA community, just expect that you will be paying into that. And the amenities on the home. So the home comes with like a ring doorbell or some type of smart security feature or something like that. That cost is also passed down to the tenant and that could range as well. So those are some of the costs that you need to be prepared to pay up front. Um, I would ask the question, are these one-time fees or these reoccurring fees, just so that way you have an understanding of how often you may have to pay these particular fees. Now, um, in the Atlanta market, it's really dynamic. So it's really going to depend on where you're trying to rent and what you can actually rent. So if you're trying to move into the inner city, most likely is either going to be like apartments or condos. If you are looking at the outskirts, you can probably find a single family house, townhome, or an apartment community. So really it's going to depend on where in Atlanta you are trying to rent. So hopefully I answered your questions. If you have any more questions about the rental market in the Atlanta area, go ahead and drop the comments below. If you are looking to purchase a home, sell a home, or even rent a home, and you would like my assistance, give me a call, send me an email or text message, or if none of those work for you, I do have my link in the description. And so you can click on that link and find a time that works best for you for us to be able to connect. All right, until the next video, bye.